You win the Daytona 500, right? I, we had Mike Helton on the show uh, last week, and I told him that I thought he might have had the most difficult job that day having to get up there on that press conference and tell people about Dad and him passing. But, it, you know, with you sitting here in the room, it's obvious to me that maybe the most difficult uh, position that anyone was in was the one you were in. Having won the race, realized this amazing moment. Uh, you'll you'll learn a lot about this in the documentary. Uh, but at the same time, you know you 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 just lost your best friend. Um, do you? And we went to Rockingham. You know, we all knew we were going. Uh, I the picture of us sit three sitting on pit wall me, me and you and park is one of the my favorite moments uh it was a very very bad time for all of us but it it, it was one of, it's one of my favorite moments from from our time together and we talked about that with steve park we uh, did we did it at length and we said what were y'all laughing about and they said probably something michael said that was it <laughs> yeah. and it probably was i remember like michael was always kind of the guy that kept things light and always had something that would sort of break the ice um it was like we went to <clears throat> your dad's funeral, and after the funeral, we went to lunch, and we were laughing and just reminiscing and yeah. the, the 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 joy of his life and how important he was to us and the funny moments, things he would say and do. You know, we were laughing, and uh, the waitress come up and I said, "You'll have to excuse us. We just left a funeral." You know, <laughs> and but but yet we yeah. we were able to, you know, you celebrate life. Yeah. Life life ended here, but. In my opinion, life goes on, and and we celebrate. We were celebrating Dale's life, and probably in that moment in Rockingham, we were doing the same thing. Yeah. I remember going. I remember at Rockingham, and practice had just started. Practice had been actually going on maybe for a half hour, and you went to the top of the board. You remember that? Yeah. <clears throat> and I was sitting, and there. that was like you did good at Daytona, but what's he going to do when he gets to Rockingham? Right. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And it was yeah. a check mark. It yeah. checked a box. Like this, Dad was right. Yeah. Michael. I'd never it. been to the top of the board. Uh, right? And it was, uh, it was, uh, that to me was sort of like, all right, we can do this. This is, this, this, this group can, can make this happen. Um, and we did. We went on and, uh, won a lot of races together, drafted together. Um, we, how did, how did we, how did you decide? You know, in, in certain moments, you talk about it in, in – I've heard you talk about it before. I, I hate to keep mentioning a documentary, but it's really good. Uh, but yeah, I think you mentioned in a documentary. At, at, at Daytona in 2001, how did you decide that you were going to push? Uh, well, first of all, let's go, let's, let's go back to the, the February race, the okay. 500, because, again, I'm Dale's buddy, and I'm driving for DEI, and he's my teammate. And we've never had one conversation about anything. Like we're just like, hey, you've nodded. Yeah, we, yeah, we, in a helicopter. Hey, I will tell you this: we 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 got that nod thing down by now. <laughs> we were we were agreeing all over the place with each other. <laughs> but prior to the Daytona 500, <clears throat> prior to the Daytona 500, on Thursday, I was like, I was, I think I was going to win my qualifying race, and I went. I, the there was a restart. I went from second to third and I had my car positioned perfectly I went from I was getting ready to go from third to fourth I didn't shift in time and I hit the rev limiter and cars just started going by me like crazy and it you I was 0 for 462 no one had ever lost 462 races and then won one and by the way no one ever will either because they'll never get a chance to lose right, that many right and I was so disgusted, disappointed with myself that I had done that. I mean, this is just a qualifying race, but it was my first chance in Dale's car. And Dale was in my race, and, and I, you know, I was going to win the race. I, I know I was if I had just shifted the gear. And so that really jarred me, and it, it, it put me in a bad place mentally. And Friday, Friday afternoon, isn't it weird, night? 18 years ago, 19, whatever it is, it just like it was yesterday. I'm walking through the bus lot, and there's Dale's bus, and I'm just trying to go because I don't want to see him. He's going to be pissed at me for missing a gear. How do you do that? And the door swings open. I'm like, <laughs> Get up here. So I go in. He said, man, I'm sorry. I messed that up. He said, what are you talking about? 
I said, I should have won that race. He said, you shouldn't have won it. I should have won it. That don't matter anymore. Here's how we're going to win Sunday. You and me and Dale Jr., we're working together. These rules, the way the spoilers are, they're, they're, the drafting's so key. The three of us are going to work together, and we're going to win this race. And I'd never heard in my 462 previous attempts, no car owner had ever sat down and told me exactly how we were going to win a race, and no, no car owner was Dale Earnhardt. So, yeah. you know, it just was, was an amazing moment for me. He didn't care about Thursday. He was focused on Sunday. And I fast forward to tell this story. I wanted to – so we, we stopped for the red flag when Tony Stewart flipped. And, right. and when Dale told me, me, him, and Dale Jr. are going to win the race, I was like, yeah, yeah, we are. And then I walk out and think, there's 40 other cars out there. How are the three of us, how are the three of us going to do that? And then I would start doubting. And I, nope, Dale said it. I'm going to do it. We're going to work together. That's how it's going to happen. They have this huge crash. Red flag, 30 laps to go in the Daytona 500. We stop on the front straightaway. I'm first, Dale Jr., Dale second, third. And I look in my mirror and I'm like, damn, no wonder he wins all these races. Like, he not only is a great race car driver, he's also a race whisperer. Mind right? reader. <laughs> <laughs> right. Race and, whisperer. Yeah, race race That's whisperer. That's awesome. But, but hey, listen, the Jedi but, mind trick on the whole field. <laughs> so, so then I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and, you know, we got probably 10, 15, 20 minutes of sitting still. Yeah. And I'm looking in my mirror and there's Dale and I can see Dale Jr. And I'm like, yeah. Dale told me we were going to work together. I wonder if he told Dale Jr. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here wondering the same thing. Well, I, I am too. I can promise you, I did not know. Yeah, I did not know whether he had told him or not because we hadn't talked about it. And we went back to racing, and it became obvious as the laps ran down, 15, 10, 5, that I was doing – I wasn't just having my foot on the floorboard riding around the racetrack – I was doing everything I could, letting off the gas, getting him to push me, doing anything, I, <clears throat> anything I'd learned in those previous races. I was trying my best. And Dale Jr. and I had it made because he was going to push till the end, and, and we had separation. The, the pack never got to us because Dale was third, and he was pushing, and his plan was the three of us to push together. And as you watch the race, you know this – Dale, that this is the case. He he was in a freaking hornet's nest. He they was, were yeah. all over, but he wasn't he wasn't giving up, and he he fought. And the the crazy thing was, when we took the white flag, I looked in the mirror, and Dale Jr. was was right on me, which that was good driving on my part because I I didn't want to be out, you know. So I I did my part. Dale Jr. was right on me, and there was a there was a gap to to Dale. And when we took the white, I said to myself, I'm going to go down in that end and make two left turns. I'm going to go down the other end and make two more. And situationally, if my engine don't blow or my tire don't go flat, I'm winning this race. I knew it. I just did. There was no way. Yeah. It wasn't working behind us. And, and then when we got to turn three, you know, the, the fighting, the blocking, the, the, the side drafting, all that had been going on, um, it, it just went went wrong when we got to turn three, and that that was uh, that was crazy because we took the checker and it was Dale and like you said, just just so much <clears throat> excitement and energy and and thankfulness. And then when I ran, when I don't know about you, I was going to ask you this. I thought about this this morning when I drove through turns three and four back by the accident scene to go celebrate the win. I, I didn't even see anything over there. Like my my eyeballs, if I'd have seen Dale wrecked, you'd have stopped. I would have stopped because yeah. that's my buddy. And if, I guess the same with you, you would have seen, like, I just was blocked from that. And I never, I never knew. I never knew that what, what was setting down there. Yeah. I remember uh, as the laps were going down, Dad had told me about the plan. Uh, he yanked me into the bus and said, I talked to Michael, this is the plan. And I was like, all right, you know, I hope it works like that. I hope it, I hope it, that would be, you know, great for all of us. I love what you said in the movie. It's so perfect. But uh, I don't even remember. Because that's crazy talk. Yeah. <laughs> 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 because I was thinking the you same You were thinking thing. it. I, he I, said it. Yeah. I, I was thinking the same thing. But I was like, nope, nope, he said it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. But when it came down to it at the end and I looked in the mirror, I thought, if I, 
if I did get a run and I took it, he would never let me hear the end of it. He would be so angry because I knew that he was going to go with Michael. Like, cause he, cause Michael wasn't breaking the plan. I was, and if I break the plan, he ain't gonna help me. He's gonna go. Told you not to do that. Now I'm gonna show you why. You know, and I'm gonna send you back there where I'm at in the hornet's nest. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there going, "All right, you know, this is how it's going down. We're gonna do this." And uh, when I came through there, I looked over there and I saw the the that Dad had. Re- I saw it in the mirror. Um, you know, so I knew there was a wreck and came by there and there they're sitting there. And I don't know. I just had a feeling. You know, and I got out of the car and um, just thought I need to go to the infield care center just to make sure everything's okay. You know, I just I, I just had this because you usually don't do that. You know, you just go well. You know, they'll they'll get checked out and I'll meet them. I was, I'm gonna just go to Victor Lane. I'll meet him there. But for whatever reason, I just thought, man, I just need to go to the infield care center. And so I went in there, and when I walked by. It was weird they had these little rooms that they stick in, yeah. and I walked down this hall just searching for Dad in each one of them rooms, and I saw Schrader, and he just looked at me, and I just knew. He looked mm. at me, and the way he looked at me, I was like, oh, my God. And then we ran out the back door and jumped in a, hel- a cop car, and they were already headed to the hospital. But, you know, for all these years, I've felt so bad about that situation because you had just won this race, like you said, 462 losses in this one win, and you never got to – it was just the cruelest thing. The cruelest thing that I can imagine happened to somebody that had been trying and trying and trying all their lives. Finally, they're partnered up with this friend of theirs, and they win this race, and they can't really celebrate it. We go back, what, 2003? Mm-hmm. 2003. And you did win the race. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now – but even then, did you get to celebrate? Right. You know, you say you do, but the, everything ties back to the. It still felt the same. Yeah, yeah. Well, the 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 but, best moment in time was, you know, July '01. Really? Um, yeah, because we we for we for like, I don't know. Victory Lane in 2003 was cool too. Yeah. You know, you're celebrating with your team, but but just the 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 joy that brought me and you. Obviously, our teams, DEI, yeah. but all the fans. I mean that that was just that was just a magical moment being on those those cars and, and again so, in typical Dale and Mike <clears throat> fashion. We didn't plan any of that crap. We didn't say, "Hey, man, you meet me in the infield if I win." It's like yeah. Dale wins, and and I had I had raced all the way up to second after screwing up on pit road, and I, I saw him go go down toward the start finish line. And I saw I'm gonna go with him, mm-hmm. and didn't have a plan. No. Just was gonna go see. Clearly, y'all didn't talk about anything, so yeah. <laughs> Not, they nodded. <laughs> right. I mean, no, serious question. I mean, because one of the things you've said that surprises me is that by, I guess my assumption was by the time the 2001 Daytona 500 rolled around, you guys are new teammates, but you're teammates, so clearly you guys have developed a relationship, but it doesn't sound like you guys talked a whole lot. Come July, now that y'all have gone through the tragedy, had you and Dell in those few months? Mm-mm. No, is that I right? I didn't really talk to anybody. I I didn't I, I didn't I don't know that you know I've, I've told Dell this before. Like I, I I'm probably the perfect candidate to go to to therapy, and I never have, and it it still hurts like it did that day. Um, and and to me that's sort of a good thing because it tells me how much I miss my friend and how special he was, but. We just, you know, I'd I'd lost all those races in a row, and and every every week I wanted to go to the racetrack. And after after February eighteenth, two thousand one, we went to Rockingham because we knew we had to, and we went to Atlanta because we knew we were supposed to. But after four or five, six tries, I'm like, this this I'm not I'm not in a good place. Mm. And I told Buffy when we got ready to go to Daytona in July, I said, Daddy's gonna get his balls back. Like I'm gonna go. I'm going to go show this place who's boss. And that was my plan. And and I'm sure that was your plan too. Yeah. And I, I know that it, was, it wasn't really that emotional for me to return to Daytona because every day was emotional. You mm-hmm. know, it didn't, it didn't mean anything yeah. extra. It wasn't harder because no. the day before in Mooresboro, wherever you were, was hard. Yeah. You know? so, but, but the way that ended and the, and the way you guys were able to celebrate, it sounds to me like that was more of a healing moment than anything else that 
you had, even the 2003 Daytona 500? Yeah, when I look back at, you know, that period in time, that, that was, that victory celebration, and I didn't even win, was one of my favorites, because I got to share it with, with Dale Jr., and I got to, you know, we, we it, it, I think it helped a lot of fans, maybe, that, that weren't as tight or closely involved as you and I were. I think, I think it helped them heal, too, yeah. seeing, seeing Dale Jr. win.